All right, folks, why don't we go ahead and get started? I think we've got uh, we've got a mere 25 people here tonight, a small meeting. Um, well, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. Welcome to the December 16th, 2021, Town of Concord Historic Districts Commission meeting. I'm calling the meeting to order at 7 p.m. And for the record, this is Nia Glenn's last meeting tonight as a commissioner. She'll be back as, as an alumna soon. Wow. So tonight we will review two new applications and uh, we have some additional business at the end of the meeting. And let me do a roll call of commissioners. If you wouldn't mind saying I when I call your name. Luis. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Linda. Aye. Mia. Aye. Paul. <laughs> Aye. Kate. Aye. And Abigail. Aye. And I think that's everybody. And five voting members tonight, uh, aside from myself, will be Luis, Melinda, Nia, and Paul. I think that's all the full members are all here tonight, right? Yes. All right. I must continue with my speech. Uh, we're conducting the meeting online in accordance with the Commonwealth of Mass extended executive order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law. Public may access the call through the phone and video conferencing. <clears throat> Members of the public will have an opportunity to ask questions and provide public comment on applications and discussions following the petitioner's presentation and questions from the commission. To do so, please raise your hand using the participant function on the Zoom platform. If you're dialing in, use uh, star nine or just wave at us and we'll We'll get to you one way or another. Heather, our host, will mute, uh, mute microphones, but if you would please mute yourself uh, if you see that your mic is on just to, uh, to, to, to minimize the background noise. I'll call on each commissioner for comments uh, once an applicant is, is done, and then we'll open the meeting for public comment once that is through. We'll come back and ask for a motion from the commission to continue, approve, approve with conditions, or deny, or disapprove. A second, and we'll do a roll, roll call vote. And once we have acted as a commission, the petitioner is free to leave the meeting. So uh, I think that is my official speech for the evening. Heather, anything to add to the agenda? It got revised a couple of times. Uh, nothing, uh, no new public hearings, but uh, anything new to add? All right, any uh, burning issues from the commission before we get started? I don't see any. All right, so our first public hearing, let's, let's dive right in. We're a minute behind schedule. Uh, this is 25 Monroe Place, Michael and Cara Tenselent. Did I do that right? Correct, yep. Oh, God, thank God. Uh, <laughs> well, see, uh, Italian Americans always mispronounce everyone else's name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a, uh, uh, a certificate in the uh, North Bridge Monument Square District to install lighting, repaint doors, and modify a previously approved screen porch. So, uh, Heather, could we put that up on the screen? And Michael, would you mind walking us through it? Yes. Yeah, so this is, um, originally we did not have um, individual doors put in. It was just one big screen area that on the original plans but we had to revise it due to some structural issues that came up with the uh, roof height. So we worked with our builder and he came up with the idea of putting in the individual doors, which is similar to the, as you can see, similar to the house behind us and similar to the other house on the other side in our rear budding lots. All right. And then they're also requesting permission for these two light fixtures. Yes, in the front we had we had two lights originally. In the front we had a, a spotlight over the driveway, which was over the um, faux garage door, that is now a window. So we removed that light and we just moved it over to the side here with a smaller light. Uh, all right. Uh, are there is there a drawing to look at, Heather? There we go. All right, so so maybe just walk walk us through this, Michael. So that is, are we looking at the drawings there? Is that the that's the drawing we approved? 
Um, the original the approved drawings did not have the individual drawers. They were just large screen openings. Okay, I see. And now it's got it's all subdivided into these these yeah. panels. Individual doors, yeah. Okay. That have screens on them. But this is now built. It, yes. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm sort of. So this is not you. So this is like sort of an after the fact thing. Okay. That's I just was. So yeah. Heather asked us to resubmit the plan so that they were more accurate description of what we had. Okay. Come up with. Uh, and then the two lights, and uh, those are to either side of the door. Yes. Okay, so um, it really and uh, so let's just go back to the photographs. Maybe that's the fastest way to um, the, the lights are pretty straightforward. So this is so the only difference we're looking at here is basically the trim, the individual door panels as opposed to large screen. Yes. Things. Now, are those screened screen doors or are they glass and do they They're screen doors and they have glass inserts? So you so they come in and out and they turn yes. into screens in the summer and glass in the winter kind of thing. Yes. Okay. And there's it's still no insulation and it. it's still a, very much a porch. There's nothing underneath that. There's no insulation above it. Okay. And and you mentioned that there's a neighbor sort of behind you. I can sort of see through the trees there. I I see. It. Yeah, I, I submitted some of those pictures earlier too. But those are the ones right behind us. Gotcha. Okay, so similar. I just wanted the commission to look at these. Okay. And that's the house on to next to them in, in the rear of our house also. Okay, so, so we wanted to try to keep in tune with the neighborhood, what everyone else was doing also. Okay, your point is not without precedent. Okay, well, it's a little, I mean, as you know, it's a little unorthodox to come back after it's built, but that's, that's nevertheless, here we are. So, all right, so, um, I don't really have any questions. Are the are the units there Anderson? Uh, uh, yeah, they're all the doors that we submitted um, prior to this with Heather. Okay, yeah, I don't have the. I don't know if I have everything right here. Um, okay. Um, well, why don't I go? I don't have any questions uh, other than the ones I've asked. So let me go around to see what commissioners think. Uh, Luis, I'll pick on you all in order on my screen. I, I really don't have any any observations. I think that it's a, it's a fine change, and I don't think it's going to make any difference. So I I have no objections whatsoever. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dennis, what do you say? I think it looks I think it looks fine. Um, <clears throat> my only comment would be the one you made that I wish when they saw they needed this change they come back to us rather than coming to us after the fact. But it's uh, it's done, and I think it's fine. They do they they don't open as doors; they're they're fixed, right? They're fixed, yes. Yeah. Okay. Just one. There's one door that goes in and out for, for entry. Right, right, right. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Melinda, any thoughts? I, yeah, I think this is very straightforward, and it's just fine. I have no objections. Okay. Thank you, Nia. Uh, no further question. It, it looks appropriate to me. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Paul. Uh, I'm in total agreement. All right, everybody, we're gunning for the um, minimal comments award here tonight. Kate? <laughs> no objections. Okay, you're in first place at the moment. Yes. Uh, Abby? Um, no objection. Um, it's appropriate, and I would have approved um, the changes had they been submitted prior to completion. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think I got everybody there. I have no further useful comment to add. So I'm going to ask, is there any public comment on the proposed uh, modifications at 25 Monroe Place? I'm looking for hands. See any hands, Heather? All right. Why don't I bring it back? And could I please have a motion from the commission? Uh, I move that we approve the application of 25 Monroe Place to install lightning repaint doors and modify the previously approved screen porch plans. I believe I'll modify that and say it was lighting, not lightning. Lightning. We don't need any lightning. We just got this all fixed. Thanks. It's lightning. It's a hard time, Luis. All right. Can I, can I get a second? <laughs> the rain in Spain doesn't fall in the all seconded. All right, let me go around for a roll call vote. Luis. Aye. Dennis. Aye. Melinda. Aye. Abby. Aye. 
please. Kate. Aye. You, uh, Paul. Aye. Nia. Aye. And I'm and I as well. All right, Michael, you are all set. Thank you for Thank you guys very much. We do appreciate the follow through. Great. Thanks. I'm sorry about the uh, the miscommunication before. With not so all right. Much. Good to see you. Thank you again for the follow through. We appreciate it. Great. Thanks. Happy Have a good night. Year. Happy New Year to you guys, too. All right. Thanks. Bye. All right. Uh, moving right along. Kate, by the way, I think you've outdone us all with your background tonight. Kate has the most fabulous backdrop. <laughs> Me? You. What? Yes. Oh, I, my, my, is it my fireplace mantle? I'm just enjoying your fireplace. Sorry. 1880s. Yeah. Beautiful. All, all right. Sorry about the distraction there. So uh, uh, <laughs> let's go to 37 Lexington Road. This is the Concord Art Association. Uh, this is in the American Mile District. This is uh, an application for a certificate to demolish a rear addition and construct a new two-story addition, including new dormers, lighting, gutters, <clears throat> and downspouts, a new terrace, walkways, retaining wall, handicap ramps with handrails, a bulkhead, fencing, landscape lighting, and other associated landscape changes. And I think, uh, is John, are you going to be leading the presentation <clears throat> here, Mr. Battle? All right, uh, Heather, is this going to, are you yes. going to run the okay. show or John, do you want to share a screen? So what we'd like to do is we'd like to control it from our end. Um, we sort of took the fundamental documents that we'd submitted to you, rearranged them a little bit in terms of the ordering so that they would uh, more correspond, correspond more uh, appropriately to uh, the presentation. <clears throat> all right. uh, I think it's all yours, Heather. Are we all good? There? Okay. All right. Okay. So Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy from my office will be uh, sort of walking us through this. Uh, Hi, with us here tonight is is uh, uh, Kate James, who's the director of the of Concord Art, and I think she will introduce us to the some of the history and uh, some of the precedent that exists there. So, Kate, you want to say Welcome a few words? You. You're on mute, Kate. Hi, I am. Uh, hi, I'm Kate James. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having us tonight. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, I guess in a nutshell, um, <laughs> it's a historic house um, and, uh, and it was purchased by Elizabeth Wentworth Roberts in 1921 and renovated by Lois Lily Howe in 1922 when it opened as the Concord Arts Center. Um, Lois Lily Howe uh, uh, took out the five bedrooms on the second floor and created a, um, a, a skylight in the back. And the same gallery exists on the second floor that was created a hundred years ago. No, um, Jeremy, next slide. Yes. There it is. There it is. Um, this is from the summer, um, a really wonderful exhibition we had called Unseen. And all of this is, is original, you know, to um, the 1922 renovation. Um, and the rooms downstairs, the galleries downstairs are, um, have all the original woodwork from, um, uh, from the 18th century. <laughs> um, and uh, we um, uh, were very proud of the building and we want to keep it um, as uh, architecturally sound as possible for posterity. So we're excited to be in front of you today. Um, let's see, uh, Elizabeth Wentworth Roberts uh, uh, did a great job by buying this building and giving it to the organization. And um, we've, we've been having exhibitions for a hundred years there. Some of the first exhibitors were um, Mary Cassatt, John Singer Sargent, uh, Daniel Chester French. He was our first board president um, and a whole litany of all stars in the Boston art scene. So um, we're proud of the organization and we look forward to hearing from you tonight. Thank you, John. Thank you, Kate. Great, so maybe, uh, so it's in, as you, as you introduce Peter, uh, the, the fundamental strategy is pretty clear. So why don't we start just going through the, the documents that we have to present to you. So uh, we have some photographs of the existing condition, which show 
So we just showed you the street side. On the back side of the building, you can see the little courtyard that we have there shows the existing gallery on the existing uh, classroom on the far left. And the, uh, the second story there is, is, uh, includes part of the office space above. Um, next slide. <clears throat> and that is the, uh, the sort of direct view of the classroom, the portion of the classroom, which we will be removing as part of our plan. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> so the site plan shows clearly how this is going to work. The existing building obviously is, uh, is up there in the, in the, on the right that uh, faces to Lexington, to, to Lexington. And the existing classroom is in light gray and the proposed new addition is in dark gray. So you can see the relative scale of the pieces. And there's also a small section in dark gray, which sort of wraps down the side of the building, which includes some additional supports, uh, support structure uh, components for us. Uh, next, next slide, please. <clears throat> and this is actually a, a, a one, just a single story addition that all this classroom space has program space on the first floor there's no actual uh, space on the second floor. The only space that's being added on the second floor is where we are increasing some square footage to make the office space a little bit more usable. I'm sorry, this is actually the first floor and it sort of shows you how the, the classrooms work and the configuration with the existing kitchen and relationship to the existing gallery spaces. Um, next slide, please. This is the second floor which shows that there's no real second floor uh, in the classroom itself. And the only work on the second floor there is the increase in squ uh, available square footage by adding some additional dormers on that roof, which we will discuss momentarily. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so here's the view from the street, which shows the general disposition and relative scale of the uh, existing building and the new, p the, new addition, the new addition in the back, which we're calling the art barn. Our basic disposition is to try and uh, sort of emulate the old New England tradition of sort of these uh, singular types, singular volumetric structures and, um, behind old antique buildings. Um, and they're very simple. It's, it's a very clean volume. We're trying to approach it from with a slightly more modern uh, set of details to so it contrasts slightly with the old historic house. So it's got a, a little bit more um, sort of leaner line, some of the, the overhangs that are all about part of the existing house are, um, are kept with that and we're, we're going with something that's as much cleaner. Um, uh, next slide, please. So the elevations sh show, we'll show you all four elevations here, which will give you a general sense of the scale and, and disposition. On the, bottom of each on the bottom of each sheet is the existing condition. On the top of each sheet is the new proposed elevation. And you can see the new barn, the new art barn beyond with a new entrance, um, which you will enter by coming down the little walkway down the side. Um, the existing, the, the, the ridge of the existing building is still higher than the art, than the art barn. Uh, next slide, next slide, please. Here is from the east side. You can see the uh, single story uh, classroom, which is being removed and being replaced by a taller volume, but still a single story building. Next slide, please. On the back, uh, we are being a bit bolder. We are trying very hard to keep the integrity, the sort of historic character towards the street. On the back, we are proposing um, a bolder uh, curtain wall, a glass wall, which looks out onto the property, not visible from the street, sort of trying to be in keeping with the bold move of the original uh, the creation of the gallery space up on the second floor. Next slide, please. <clears throat> and from the courtyard, you can see that the gable end of the new of the new classrooms sort of gives a nice face to in that courtyard. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> so here's the view from the outside. <clears throat> um, obviously not straight from the street, but it gives you a relative sense of the of the of the pieces. That sort of taut modern detailing, quite uh, quite minimal glazing towards the street as a as a barn would do, and then and the, what we've done here is we've added a few dormers on the existing roof, and we've projected that little entrance out again in a in a more contemporary volumetric flat roof piece, 
to give us a way to get into the building for all for everybody to be able to enter right there at the knuckle. Um, next slide, please. The courtyard side shows that 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 the face that will sort of be the uh, literally the facade of the uh, of the of the classroom addition. The courtyard is used a lot for exterior gatherings and um, functions and uh, and also for teaching uh, classes. Next slide, please. We are being a bit bolder with the with the back of the building, asking for permission to do a curtain wall back there, which is sort of in keeping with the way the architect approached the the and the restoration of the uh, the, sec the creation of the second floor gallery originally, with this bold curtain wall on the back. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> which on the inside allows you to look out to that wonderful antique wall and, and look up the hillside. Next slide, please. And how it would feel as a, when it's utilized as, as one large space or one large classroom, depending on the configuration that it might be in. Um, so that's a quick view of, of the kind of the character of how it works. Next slide, please. And this is sort of how it feels from the street. Um, showing the disposition of the new art barn relative to the old historic building everything that has been uh the, everything that is sort of the, the smaller elements like the dormers and the modifications to the the sort of small extension to the uh just below the dormers that is all kind of retaining the detailing and the overhangs and the and the molding conditions of the existing house of the existing building and only the art barn is sort of articulated as this new contemporary component. And that basically sort of summarizes uh, in, in, in a quick way what we hope to do and, and we are hoping to be able to uh, take the poetic license to allow us to use that bold glass wall on the back. We still want to obviously we want to preserve the historic character from the street side and yet we want that element of sort of that little bit of element of surprise and delight when you come into a place that's got this kind of bold move as the original gallery did. Um, so that sort of summarizes our view. I think I could we could walk you through, we have with us tonight the landscape architect who could um, also be able to explain to what we're gonna do about uh, the landscape. Um, sure, why don't we do that real quick? Yeah. Okay, fine. So that would be the next slide. Um, hi, my name is Kristen First. Um, this is very small. So I think that John gave you a very good overview of, um, of what the goals are for the landscape. Um, the primary goals are to provide access to the new classroom space, to expand the um, patio spaces in the rear, both for use um, by classroom student, student classes and for functions. Um, to improve access from the driveway to the rear space um, and um, always keeping in mind the protection and preservation of um, several significant trees on the property. Um, in particular, and you saw it in um, the renderings that John um, showed you, there's a very large sugar maple right there. So any of the work we're doing, we're keeping that in mind. Um, the most significant move in the front of the property is the relocation of that walkway to the classroom. Right now, there is a path there that goes to the existing handicap door. So what we're doing is we're moving that existing pathway over to align with the new classroom building. So it'll just be a single walkway. Um, it'll be wide enough to continue to allow handicap access and it then will continue to the classroom. And it's designed in such a way that um, as it passes the sugar maple, um, it's really a floating walkway. It'll be stone, um, and, um, but it will protect the roots there so um, we can keep that beautiful tree. Um, other important things are the planting um, along that eastern side of the property, or yeah, eastern side of the property. Um, it's all native plantings. We, through construction, we will have to eliminate several trees, but we are preserving 
the most significant large trees, and we will enhance that buffer there with the use of native plants, um, rhododendron, um, mountain laurel, et cetera. Um, in the back, the paving there is really just a continuation of the paving that was installed in 2011. Um, the, it's a bluestone paving, um, and the pattern and design of that draws um, on the, the design of the existing beautiful antique stone wall there. Um, I think that's just a very quick overview, but obviously there are, there are details that we could go into further if you'd like. Thank you, Kristen, John. This is an excellent presentation. Heather, could you just put up the um, first page of the product uh, selections uh, PDF? I just want the commission, it's a nice <clears throat> summary uh, of the um, uh, materials and finishes. Do you have that handy? So at the moment we have control of the screen. So Jeremy, why don't you give them oh, back sorry, control of the screen? Right. Uh, no, no. And then all the documents that you just saw are part of the presentation. There's one additional rendering, which we will provide to you in, uh, okay. as well. Great. So, but the they were not organized in that manner. So we, no, we no, chose to okay. reorganize it. Don't worry right. about it. No, I just wanted the yeah. commission to see this page because this is a nice summary of, in case people had questions about what's what. This is all... So the, the addition will be a metal roof, uh, aluminum gutters, the Marvin signature collection, windows. Now, is that the curtain wall is also a Marvin? Uh, that is correct. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's, the, it's from the Marvin's more contemporary product line, a um, okay. little bit crisper edging, but fundamentally yeah. it's still a Marvin product. Okay, and then we're doing it. It's a wood siding, vertical siding stained um okay that that uh, is correct all right uh well this is an excellent presentation thank you all um i just want to i'll jump ahead a little bit so we're obviously going to do a site visit um and our next meeting is january 6th is that right so um would it be can we just get that on the calendar now while we're all here uh is 8 a.m too early to meet you on site there on January 6th. I'm looking at Kate as well as uh, as John and your team. You're okay? Okay, so let's just- put uh, We can make calendar. it work. Okay, so we'll let's plan a site visit. Um, and my other question generally are, so is this, I realize you're showing us the whole building. Are we in the public uh, view shed from the back because of the cemetery? So we went up on the, when you go to the, the very back of the cemetery, in fact, and you look through the trees, we can show you some photographs. It is, it is technically visible, but you're, you're looking almost parallel to, here's the, so yeah. you're looking almost parallel to the back wall. It's very hard to see anything. And in fact, if you were to say, what's the most dominant feature you look down on, looking down on the building, it's actually this gigantic skylight, which was put in as part of the piece in, in, in 1921 or 22. Uh -huh. So it's been there for a hundred years and no one's ever really noticed it, <laughs> except when they go inside. I, I just want to make sure you, you don't have to present to us things we can't see from the public way. So, but, but thank you for showing us the whole building. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I think this is a terrific presentation. So um, I'm not, I'm going to let the commissioners uh, weigh in with initial reactions and thoughts. So uh, Luis, may I pick on you first? Uh, I think that this is a very nice uh, design, and it's an example of uh, what a design should be in a historic building. So this is a, this is a modern structure that has all kinds of references uh, to, to the historic nature of, of the main structure. And I congratulate both the architect and the landscape architect for having implemented that vision so, so effectively. Um, so I look forward to the set this. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm just gonna go around in order. Dennis. I think it looks great, no questions. Okay, thank you, sir. Nia. I'm sorry, I won't be able to see the uh, site visit, but I'll just say, I think the design is terrific. Um, the modern take on it sets it apart from the um, main building. It's subordinate, but it uses the same language of of historic buildings in the area. So I think you've done a terrific job um, and it's very well articulated. And 
I have to do the plug for the maple. I'm delighted that you're going to try and save that maple tree. So. Oh yeah, def definitely. Good luck with the project. <laughs> Thank you. Nia, site visits are open to the public. So when you revert to civilian status, you can still come to the site. Visit. Oh no, eight o'clock is way eight too early in the morning. <laughs> Especially in January. <laughs> Great way to start your day. Yeah, I'm all done. <laughs> you know, January 6th is one year since the insurrection, so we'll have lots to talk about. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> right. Uh, Linda, what do you think? Uh, well, Nia, I'd be happy to pick you up that day, okay? Just so you know. Um, so I, I think the design is beautiful. Um, I love the glass across the back. Um, I think you'll find that that patio we get to use much more frequently. It, I mean, the lighting will be fabulous in there. Um, I think it's a wonderful design. Okay, thank you, Melinda. Paul, what do you think? Um, I'm, I'm gonna resist just adding on to the, the cumulative compliments here, but I wanted to ask, could we take a quick look at the curtain wall, the glass curtain wall that faces the courtyard, I think? It faces directly to the back. It doesn't face the courtyard itself. Okay. But yes. Okay. So, so, okay. so I apologize. There... Some, something, something electronic here is dinging in my uh, in my realm here. I don't know what it is. I turn it off. So I apologize. Is that um, John? Is is that that doesn't get much sun exposure then? That is correct. Is that right? That's one of the reasons that that faces almost almost due north, due north and the hillside yeah. actually comes up quite strong. Um, Artists like Northern Light, but there's a lot of trees there. I think it's more, it will get a very soft muted light coming in there. Um, right. And and we've we have actually, this actually, the way this works, we can actually set it up and see what the sun would be on any given day. We don't think we're ever gonna get real natural direct sunlight in there. Yeah, no, that's not a concern. W one other seemingly irrelevant question. In the upstairs room, there's a skylight that is, that that is an original or if not original that's an existing uh i guess it's a skylight right that is correct we're we're, we're not adding any skylights as part of that that's an existing skylight on the on the build okay and th that those two up there's two up high two up high there, there's one yeah that one that's existing oh so this actually is, this a, is a this is light. actually called a lay light it's a horizontal glass that's sort of divvied up in that with that linear metal uh, division but the skylight is actually in a pitched roof and it's sort of it's the way the the lighting is done at the mfa at the louvre all the at all the great galleries is that it's there's a void up in there in the attic you can go up and look into that void between the horizontal glass um on the below and the pitched glass up, up above does that answer okay. your question well, yeah, I mean, do, does that, well, that also faces north as at least at that elevation, correct? Correct, it does. Yeah, correct. so there's nothing south facing, there's no. That, that's correct. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just had an idea I wanna share with you offline, but I can talk to you about that. Okay. It's not relevant to this discussion. All right, thank you, Paul. Kate, what do you think? Uh, I think it looks good. I think it's appropriate. I like how subordinate the art barn is to the original structure. And I think the curtain wall as a nod to Lois Lily Howe's skylight is going to look terrific from the few viewers who see it from that angle. All right. Thank you, Kate. And Abby, what do you think? Um, so I'm looking forward to the site visit. I think initial impressions are that um, I think it's going to be a really interesting and successful addition to the property. Um, I did have two questions. The, um, the railing along the new proposed pathway um, in the front, is what in the rendering, is that what's being proposed? No. I, I, no. Okay. That's really yeah. a landscape issue, so I'm going to let Kristen address that one. Yeah, that's just the rendering. Um, there is an existing iron railing, and um, the I think. Do you have that image, um, Robert? Jeremy, it's under the PDF with all the with the narrative. There's a photo of it. I'll give me one second. I'll tell you exactly the photo. If you keep going down, Jeremy, to some existing photos. Sorry, guys. Give us one second. See right there. There it is. Oh, there it, there is. it is. 
Okay, so great. that's an existing, so it would be like that. Okay, good. Because the one in the rendering is hideous. And I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. blunt about that, but I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah. Um, uh, and then my second question, just in terms of in preparing for the site visit, I noticed on the landscape plan, there are washers on the back wall. Are those existing currently, or is that new proposed exterior lighting? Those are, that is new proposed exterior lighting. And um, we do have, um, there is a cut sheet with the information about that lighting. So the idea was that, um, you know, you're looking out into the courtyard and there is this beautiful old wall um, and at night it's hidden. And so we thought it would really be really beautiful to illuminate that wall. Um, um, okay, so you have the, you have yeah. the, the washers there, you have some proposed path lights. Yes. Um, and some recess fixtures over the, in the portico over the door, correct? Yes. Is there any other additional exterior lighting? I didn't see any, I think that's. So, um, right, there's lighting along the path. Yeah, the path lights. There, right, there is a, a new light next to the uh, stairs, next to the front door, okay. next to the main entrance. Um, there is, we've added lighting, Currently there's spotlighting on the side of the building near the driveway mm -hmm. um, that is used um, to provide illumination to the back. And so what we're proposing is path lights there to a new pathway to access right, right there. Okay. So removing the spotlights and adding path lights. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was just, I always like to get the lighting in my mind before we have a site visit. Um, so let me just clarify one of the things while on this, all of the doors, the, uh, the, the door to the classroom, which is on that, so you can walk up to from the street, mm -hmm. all have uh, recess lights recess in lights. those pieces. There's no visible light fixtures. So there's no visible light fixtures attached to the art barn, so to speak. Okay. Okay. Um, no, I think, I mean, overall, I think my impressions are, are really positive and I'm only starting to nitpick because I think generally it's very successful um, and I think it's appropriate. Um, and I think it's a nice juxtaposition to the um, original structure. So um, I'm looking forward to the visit. All right. Uh, and the only thing I'll add is I love the nod to sort of the Bauhaus in the back there. The aesthetic of that uh, curtain wall is going to be pretty cool. Um, all right. So I think we heard from all commissioners. I think if we have, I'm going to open it up uh, to public comment. Is there any public comment on the application? for uh, the changes being proposed at 37 Lexington Road Concord Art Association. And I'm just gonna look around the room here, knowing we have a site visit and we'll have another meeting in January. I see, see any hands? Nope. All right, well, I, let's bring it back to the commission and I'll look for a motion to continue this to our next meeting, please. Um, I move we continue the application of uh, uh, helping out uh, 37 uh, Lexington 37 Road. Lexington Road. Lexington Road uh, to do all those things. <laughs> Sorry. That's to, right. Uh, to uh, demolish to the addition all. and construct new two story addition, new dormers, lightning, gutters, and dancers, new terrace walkways, retaining wall, handicap ramps with handrails. Bulkhead fencing, landscape lighting, and other associated landscape changes. And a site visit on the 6th, correct? And a site visit on January 6th at 8 o'clock in the morning. Second. Right. Thank you. Uh, let me go around for a roll call, Luis. Yes. Uh, Dennis. Yes. Melinda. Yes. Abigail. Aye. Kate. Aye. Paul. Aye. Yeah. Aye. And I'm an I as well. All right. So thank you, John and Kristen and team and Kate for attending. And this looks like a pretty exciting project. Lovely presentation. Thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you on site on the 6th, unless there's a big snowstorm, in which case we may have to postpone. But let's hope we don't have a snowstorm. That's fine. And the one rendering which we added to our presentation tonight, we will email to you so you have a, um, but that's the only additional image that we had added to the presentation. Okay, so, great. Great, no, terrific. Okay. Good presentation. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. 
All right, folks, uh, that is actually our last public hearing for this evening. So we have concluded our public uh, hearing business and we're on to our business. So I do wanna point out to folks here that um, this, this is now into other business. So we actually don't have public comment. This is not like an application where there's public comment. So uh, other business are things come before the commission, we discuss them and then we take action or not. Uh, you're obviously welcome to attend, but we um, we won't discuss it because typically we obviously want to put an ad in the paper and notify the voters and all this other kind of stuff, and we haven't had a chance to do that. So I just want that uh, to be stated for the record. So um, I think if I may, um, let me ask Heather, uh, what's the 215, 219 Lexington Road other business? Um, so the, the owner is requesting to add an additional mailbox. Um, I can share and everyone see this picture. Yeah. Um, so, so, can, so I want to jump this to the front of the discussion. Obviously, that would be a, a nice one to knock off if we could. So the um, owner here um, sent me. He would just be adding. Um, the same exact mailbox mm -hmm. um, just next to it on the same post. Um, and so he's he's asked if he needed to submit an application and I said I would bring it before the commission tonight just because it seemed to be a rather straightforward um, request. Um, so it's it's up to you guys. So this is a, this, is a, this one's gonna stay in another one next to it. Correct, yes. Can I ask a dumb question? Does this one get repainted? <laughs> I don't know. Because uh, that's the only thing I would say. I, I I see no reason to object myself, but it's going to look a little, you know, there's going to be a contrast there. Um, Is well, it for the same address? So the um, the owner received permission for like a second second dwelling in the house. And no other changes were made. Um, so the mailbox is for the second dwelling. So it'd be sort of right next to it. Um, I, you know, I mean, obviously this, the reason we're talking about is it's right across the street from the Conquer Museum, right? So it's, it's you know, on the American mile. Uh, well, look, let me just ask, what, what do folks think? Luis, what do you think? Uh, no, I think that this is perfectly straightforward and I wouldn't have any objections to putting another mailbox. On the other hand, I think that mailboxes are very visible components of the, of, the, of the historic landscape. Therefore, I think that we as a commission collectively should have a greater role in, in stating how mailboxes look like, look like. So as a matter of principle, I would like to see the applicants make, make an application the, the, uh, to put a second mailbox, but I don't think that, uh, that I'm going to not approve it or anything. It's just a matter of the principle of we being able to control more the look of mailboxes. That's my take, thank you. Okay, thank you. Dennis, what do you think? I agree that it needs a coat of paint. I, I suspect, is he gonna find the exact same mailbox to put beside that mailbox? I suspect he's gonna put up two similar new mailboxes, but then I guess Gav, that's not what uh, Heather's saying. Um, but she he did said say- He said he bought the same, same exact mailbox. Okay. Um, Anyway, I, I have no strong opinion either way about whether an application should come in or not. Um, I, I just don't have any strong feeling about it. Okay. Melinda, what do you think? I'm having a little trouble visualizing where the second one's going to go on that small post. I, I, I think just it's don't see point. how that's going to fit. Um, I'd like to see a... a, a a picture of some sort. Um, I don't, you know, what are you going to do? Go off catty corner or something? I, I don't get it. Um, <laughs> Heather, do you know, is he proposing a, just a second post? No, he said it would be mounted on the same post. Oh. Oh. And, and I think he should show a. Design. Yeah, I think we got to see a picture of what that looks like. Because that, uh, <laughs> I agree. I don't know how like, you do it this way or that, like top, bottom, or. On um, top, uh, angles. Let's see if he can get us a picture, Heather, of what it will look like. I think it's a little too hard for us to wing it here. 
would you mind going back to him and asking for a little more information? Not to cut the rest of you off, I'm assuming you probably feel the same way. But I yeah, I'll be the funny daddy that says it needs an application, um, just for consistency sake and for you know sake of fairness and equity. It's it's a change visible from the public way, blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it just fits the standard for it needs application. Okay. I have no objection to it and I don't think it's gonna be an issue, but um, I think we have to be consistent. I think you're right, Abby. So Heather, let's, let's cut to the chase. So let's go ahead and ask the poor fellow to put an application in and get us a little more description. All right, I didn't mean to, Paul, Kate, did you wanna say anything? Anybody else have any? No, I'm in agreement though. If it's gonna to be two mailboxes on one post, let's take a look at it because that could look disastrous. To okay. Lisa's point, you know? Yeah, Kate? Same thing. I, I... Okay. All right, well, thank you all. All right, um, so skipping back a little bit. So uh, 615 Lowell Road, <laughs> well, Mike, you're uh, back with a, uh, we got a submission for a, a different design um so i think i don't know if the commission I mean, we, these drawings i think we got these drawings recently it just a, yesterday um and i'm assuming commissioners have had a chance to look at it mike do you want to just to tell us what you're up to i know uh heather i don't think the denial letter went out yet right from the last not yet, not yet i believe heather um will have it stamped by the town clerk um on monday Okay, and, and I realize, and the only reason I asked that, Mike, is I don't wanna, you know, we're sort of overlapping kind of pretty quickly, letters are going out before new applications are coming in, so. Uh, but why don't you tell us what you're up to? Sure, um, can you hear me? Yep. Yep, the uh, maybe, so as, the, as we've all gone through this whole process, we take all your comments to heart and here we are with a, a, our fourth different design. If you uh, maybe Heather go to the site plan for uh, the first floor plan, I can quickly. I, I, I'm sorry. I would like to, to, to interject if I may. You see, I, I believe that this uh, applicant has come uh, three times before this commission with uh, uh, different designs uh, for this uh, site that is being referenced to 615 Lower Road. And there have been extensive discussions about the design. And I don't believe that this commission has uh, any purview on reviewing any further designs unless it is as a formal application. So I don't believe that uh, there should be any, any discussion about any particular design and, and we should not be shown any, any proposed uh, changes to previous designs or the, being them different or the same. So I, 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 I move that uh, we ask the applicant to uh, state verbally uh, what is the purpose of uh, his presentation today, whether it is a matter of uh, clarification or it's a matter of uh, procedure, et cetera. But I don't believe that we should be able, we should, be, we should have to see any type of design unless it is as a formal application uh, to build something in the uh, aforementioned address 650 Road. Thank you. Um, I think, I, think I, I, had, I had discussions with Heather about this and, According to your regulations, we, I can come back with as many designs as I want, as long as they're completely different. It's very clear in your regulations. Right, and I think, I think what I wanna, Luis, hang on a sec. We're not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna discuss it. Mike can tell us what he's up to and we can say thank you very much. And I, I will make the call as to whether or not I think this needs to proceed to an application at, at the end or what have you. But if people have strong objections to the to what's being presented, I think we should hear it. But I think you're right. We aren't going to have a general discussion because we've done this uh, a number of times. No, we, that's why we were just here looking for some input to, to to take the next step. Well, I think to be fair to Luis, Mike, I think what he's pointing out sometimes, as you know, people will come in formally before the commission. The Concord Artist uh, Association did it. Yeah, we they did too. Our, our first time right. we came in formally. So yep. We came just to see like what's the sense of the commission. And you yep. know, so I think what, what here's what I would like to do to be fair to you. Just sure, tell us sir. what you've done here. I think we'll just ask each commissioner what they think and that's it. Yeah, that's that's all I that's all okay. my, I have for expectations. Right. Thank you. Um, so as you know, our whole process, we listen to all the comments, good and bad, and try to keep working with you, trying to have, find a happy place. So it's 
loud and clear, we have a new design here with the garage out back. It's, uh, it's not labeled garage, but way in the back is the garage. A new driveway will come in same location as the other driveway down the right side and you'll take a left into that garage. Um, if you go back maybe to the front ele elevation, Heather, I can talk a little bit about, so what we're trying to do here is present a, a small looking house from the streetscape. So this is all you see from the street. It's rough, it's 46 feet across by about 24 feet tall. Um, we're calling it a hybrid of an arts and crafts bungalow type style. And again, with the whole intention all about that streetscape. So we, we've heard you loud and clear, you want it to be small. So we put all, this is what you see from the street. Um, maybe you can go back to that floor plan and the massing is, is everything is behind. You can see the, a lot of the living area is behind that main family room study area and then back to the garage. Um, maybe go to the site plan. I can talk about the site plan a little bit. So we're still at that, you know, way back at that uh, 90, it's roughly 70 feet back from my lot line, which is the 120 foot line, which we all know what is left to right. Uh, we have it there. I, I feel like it would work better. We could bring it all the way back to the 40 foot setback, because if you recall, there's still another 25 feet to Lowell Road. So when I put it at the 120 feet, I actually have 95 feet back. That's where this house sits physically from Lowell Road, which is a long way back. You, it's back there and it, you barely see it back there. It's up to you guys on the, the siting. We can move it uh, 30 feet forward, which will accomplish um, a smaller garage, uh, smaller pavement, eliminating the pavement. And it'll work to uh, keep, the, uh, keep away from the trees. It'll, it'll, as we move these bump outs, it keeps you away from the trees. Uh, that's that's about the crux of it. Uh, you know, I'd be happy to hear your input, and you know, I just I just want to keep working with you. And you know, we all know this is gonna house gonna get there, and we'll just try to find the happy house. All right, thank you, Mike. Uh, all right, let me just ask commissioners for just a quick comment. Uh, I'm going to go in reverse order. Abby, what do you think? Um, what's the square footage of the new proposed? <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our favorite subject, right? Um, do I have to answer that question? <laughs> I'm yes. joking. The, yeah, the, we did. We, it is smaller. We've it's down. It's right around thirty six twenty. Okay. Um, but you, I, I would I would answer that with you. You're lucky to stand in from the streetscape. You you're lucky to see twelve hundred square feet. No, I mean I appreciate that you've you heard you know the past commission's um, concerns about massing and size and scale and position of the garage. Um, so you've addressed some of those. Um, so, you know, welcome to proceed with an application if you like. Um, uh, you know, given, given I, I'm, I'm hesitant, you know, as Lisa said, I'm hesitant to say much of anything because I feel like we've been through such a process with this. Um, and we do these informal. Um, yeah, they're very know, helpful. Consul yeah, we do these informal consultations where we tell people, you know, our our general impression, and then we welcome them to submit an application. So I'd say my general impression is that you've addressed some concerns, but not not um, all, and you're welcome to submit an application. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. Kate, what do you think? <clears throat> um. My first question too was, what was the size? I figured it was about 3,800 square feet. And I know Mike doesn't like that topic, but so, you know, our purpose with our special act is to you know, provide determination of suitability and appropriateness in the district. And size is a subset of appropriateness. And um, you know, we're not trying to deprive you of the use of this property but it's your job to apply the standards that we've repeatedly clarified and discussed. So, you know, I'll wait to see what you um, ultimately submit, but that's where I'm thinking right now. Sure, my, my answer there was, would be that we, as a streetscape and we present as roughly 11 or 1200 square foot house. Mm -hmm. every, that, that's, that's it, so we, you can have, you can have 6,000 square feet behind me. 
or someone can bring that little house in with me, come back later where you have no purview and put a 5,000 square foot addition out the back, I think, because you can't see it. So now you all have purview over the whole project. It's all about from the streetscape. It's why I, I object to talking about the square footage. I'll talk about massing, but the, the square footage is. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Kate. Uh, Paul, what do you say? Um, well, I, I think first of all, um, I applaud your effort to meet some of the community concerns and obviously the standards of of the commission. That's that's important, and I think that's the right attitude to bring to this. I'm not going to comment on it, but I I can tell you I will have a couple of questions. One is the driveway, the length of it. I know in the past I've commented on does it have to be an impermeable surface? You know, does it have to be uh, macadam or whatever we call pavement today? That's going to be one of my questions. I don't want you to answer it now. I just want you to think about it. The other is the juxtaposition of the driveway and the building. Why that side is distinguished from the other side, which I remember as having a dirt road adjacent to it that, that addresses the uh, neighboring property. So those will be among my questions and we'll, I think we'll have the usual concerns about the trees and so forth. And probably the question whether you can move it further back. So, but I, I applaud the effort. Thank you. Thank can you. I just, can I, I, just, clear, can I can clear, clarify that, are you asking, uh, is it possible to put the driveway on the left-hand side? Is that what you're asking next to the in, other? In, in fact, I'm not asking it, but I will be asking it. Yes. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I'll, I'll think of an answer. Nia, can you get one more shot at the, at the barrel here? Mike, I think you um, know pretty much where I stand, but I won't be here to, to deliberate. Um, and I appreciate the efforts you made uh, from the Lowell Road side. I just would point out, you know, which we've tried to explain in the past that um, in addition to all the questions that have already been asked, um, that the Barrett's Mill view, um, the, the view from the corner um, is still a, a really important important view shed. So we are not concerned, we are not prime, just concerned with the Lowell Road, um, uh, you know, streetscape. We are um, also concerned with the Barrett's Mill streetscape. Yes, and I can, what I can do is provide um, my right side of butter blocks just about 90% of this. So that's all you're seeing. And it, we, I, I'll provide that with the application. So that the, that the, would be helpful. I think that, you did that with one of your renditions. Yeah, you that's from the yeah that's that, from that the, would uh, be helpful from the Barrett's Mill side. And the further <clears throat> we push it back, the less it's seen from Barrett's Mill. But then right. you know we all have these catch twenty twos. But then the the longer the driveway becomes. But um yeah, yeah right. we can provide that info, and I can show you how my uh, the large mass of my right hand side of butter will completely cover my house. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nia. Uh, Melinda, what do you think? I have a question regarding the proposed garage. Um, is there space for an office above it? Do, do you still have 500 no. square feet? No, no. And it, maybe, uh, Heather, that site plan can be a little confusing. That isn't the proposed garage there. Oh, If great. you go back to the floor, first floor plan. That, oh. So we, we're overlaying different layouts so okay. yeah no it's a it's a one-story garage all the way back there's no living space above it and have you gone from four bedrooms to five i mean from five back um, to four rather from five back to four i don't i don't i don't think so we you know i have four of them now so no, it's the same um yeah no i think they're i think they're similar but it, i that being asked, I, I don't know if that's in purview. Does it does it, it matter? It may not be. I just without seeing a second floor. Um, yeah, no, no. There's a, we have a second floor plan. Yeah, I mean Heather can put it up. Oh, so I'm good. That was a good view there, Heather. Back. I'm sorry. Back to that. So there, yeah, there's the view there. I know that site plan's a little confusing because we're cutting and pasting different layouts on top of them. So that's the right side view from Barrett's Mill. And I would guess my right side of butter 
his home is lands somewhere in between those double windows all the way up the front. All right, so, uh, that's a guess here, but well, I'll get it more accurate for you. But the rest of it, the rest of that structure you see is completely blocked by massive barns and a, and a big mass of a house. All right, uh, Melinda, anything else there? Uh, no, I don't have any other questions now. Paul, you, you had another comment there? Um, you know, in this age of very sophisticated animation, um, which we often see in courtrooms, is it not possible to give us an animated perspective from the street and from Barrett's Mill Road? I you know, great, yeah, great question. Because I, I, yeah, I really, to the dimensions of what's proposed. Yeah, I, uh, great question. Because I, I was very impressed with Battles Architect, the picturing there that they had there. Um, yeah, we'll I'll look into it. I, I I don't know what type of software that is, or so I'll do everything we can to show you that and you know yeah, in a real real time. SketchUp, Mike, it's probably SketchUp. It's probably not Revit. Yeah. But I think that I think that that's I will say, Paul. That's a. I mean, I think we're getting to the point where orthographic views of this project are not very helpful right now because of of the way this the lot is shaped and all the different perspectives. So I think I think a three D massing model would be really not not a physical model, but a, you know something where we can see views from different. Yeah, I, I I'll, I'm going to look into it. All right, Dennis, what do you think? Well, I think massing is everything. And uh, I, just as an aside, when I ran the Concrete Museum and Graham Gunn put a building on, a lot of concern about our original plan as being way too big. We went back, we redrew, redrew it, changed the massing, and actually built a larger building when we were done. But because the massing worked, no one complained about the way, the way it looked. And I think this has come a long way from, uh, from the street. And if indeed it's blocked uh, from Barrett's Mill, I think it's a great improvement. Um, my major concern would be that I think the design uh, from Lowell Road has gone downhill. It looks like a cape with a Swiss chalet stuck on the front of it. Mm -hmm. So I don't, really, I don't really like the design at all. Simpler, better, more traditional, I guess, in this particular setting would be better. So that would be my, my only comment. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, Luis, I didn't want to leave you. I left you last, but not least. Anything? Don't worry. Uh, I want to congratulate Mike Bushnell because he has been very persistent in trying to find a good design. And I really look forward to a design that uh, is uh, historically respectful of the site and that represents uh, the historical values that the town of Concord has. And I believe that he's perfectly capable of delivering such design. So I look forward to it as a formal application uh, to uh, this site. All right, thank you, sir. All right, Mike, I'm not gonna add anything else because it would just be piling on. So I think yep. you've heard from the group here. I, is there any, do you have any questions for us other than going ahead and proceeding with an application if you, you choose? Know, I, well, I, um, a, a, you know, a general question and, and we are back to the favorite subject is, is the square footage always gonna be a hurdle? Uh, it's not a hurdle. It's a, what I would say is this: it's a it's a piece of the data. You're right. It's not it's not really our business to approve or not approve the square footage, but it bears directly on the massing. So yeah. I know I know it's a little fuzzy, but no, you know, no, I we you know, I yeah, yeah. I mean, unless you put the bedrooms underground, they affect the massing. You know, that right, of, right. I think that's right. what it's a. It's probably shorthand for people to ask how big is is the volume. Right. Does that make sense. So you're right. Yep. We're not trying to scold you for the number of rooms. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I guess I would just ask: Do you think it's better pushing as far back as we can, or we move it back to the front? I, I, I actually think the, I think these three D studies that you may provide will will reveal more than than just our opinion. I think we really really need to talk about the sure the whole thing on the site and from different views, and I think that would be super helpful. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'll do my best and see what we can do. Yep. All right, uh, any last words of wisdom from the commissioners or should, can we let everybody go back to baking Christmas cookies or whatever it is people were doing tonight? All right, well, Mike, uh, if you choose to make an application, you know where we are. All right, thank you for your time. 
All right, and thank you folks for in the gallery for attending. And I'm sorry we can't take public comment, but I'm sure you know where we live. <laughs> Peter. All right. Um, I'm going to just keep going with our uh, business. So we've got some minutes to approve now. I did one of these come out today. I don't remember because yes. I haven't had a chance to. Yes. Read them. So I, I saw all the ones that were available, and I think that all of them were fine. I didn't. Were see they okay? I, there were ones. The oh, the fourth, the ones for the uh, the second meeting in November. We haven't done or the. What was the ones that came out today? I can't remember. The 4th and the 18th. The 18th, November. those are the ones that we couldn't do today. 18th of November, that's fine. All right, is there any objections to the uh, minutes on the 4th of November and the 2nd of December? Um, I, don't, I didn't even see the 2nd. Did those come out, Heather? Okay, so those are the ones that did not come out. Yeah. No. Okay. I'll pull up. So we I, have site visit minutes from October 7th, January 4th, and January 18th, and then meeting minutes from November 4th and November 18th. Okay, it was the 18th. Uh, the site visit ones, I think we can approve pretty quickly. The fourth I looked at, did you look at the 18th, Nia? Um, I did look at the 18th. I didn't have an issue with the 18th. I have a couple issues with the um, 4th. I'm still working on the 4th, but there's definitely a couple things that um, I wanted to clarify. And I had one thing I wanted to clarify on the 18th, but I can do that. Okay, here. well, why don't we, um, I don't want to, I don't want to just wing it here. Why don't you get those comments to Heather and then we can approve them at our next meeting. Please. Can we approve site visits? And let's approve the site visits. So would you make that motion, Luis? Sure, I move that we approve the site visits uh, from 10-7, uh, 11-4, and 11-18, 2021. Yeah, I just need a second. Second. Uh, all in favor, just you can raise your hand this time. We don't have to go around the circle. Uh, it's a yes. unanimous aye. All right, those are recorded in, uh, and we're gonna get our comments to Heather's. <coughs> All right, uh, so our second to last order of business. So I, I just wanted to put commission membership on here. So we are gonna elect new officers early next year. Um, and I think, and I realize we didn't get to this before tonight, but if you have nominations for chair, vice chair and secretary, uh, would you mind getting those to Heather and me uh, before the next meeting? And I think what we'll do is we'll hold elections at the end of the next meeting. I think we can do that in other business, right, Heather? Okay. So I'll chair one more meeting. Nia, you are, you're free to go, although we'd love to have you. Um, and then we have one commissioner, we have a, an appointee in the wings and Heather, I'm not sure what's happening there. Henry so the NRC was going to place that on their agenda um, this week. So I have not heard, um, but I will check with Delia tomorrow. Okay, and assuming that goes through then we would potentially be welcoming a new member on January 6th. Okay. Yes. Well, we'll let Peter, you would you, would you? Um, let us know again, clarify who are the candidates that can take those positions? So, uh, well, that's actually a good question for all the positions. The candidates for chair, uh, well, actually, I guess it's all officers at the moment, right? It would be Nia stepping down, I'm stepping aside. I'm still a full voting member, but the remaining candidates are Luis, Paul, and Melinda for officers. Now, the reality is we can, um, uh, Kate would technically move up into the Conquer Museum slot, but Kate, tell us again, what's your plan for next year? The plan is that I'm going to Rome for six months. For six months? Yes. So that's assuming COVID doesn't shut me down, send me out, whatever else. Um, I'm supposed to leave in about three weeks, right after the next meeting. Um, okay. 
so I don't know. I don't think I can have an absence that long. Um, yeah, I don't think. I, actually, I'm, I'm thinking more just for like quorum purposes. It would probably be better to. I don't. I don't know what the word would be. Resign or step aside, and then when you're back, are you coming back in six months? Or are you going to stay away forever? Depends how. <laughs> What on our midterm elections or something? To well, yeah. Um, I know we plan to come back right here to Concord, and I would come back to the HDC. Um, but do I lose what you know? Do I go back to square one? I don't know. Yeah, see, that's above my pay grade. I yeah. don't. I think we would. You would be a special. This has never happened before, at least in my memory. Um, so I think we'd look at it as a special case. But I think. I think it would be a good idea for someone to fill your slot just to have so we can have a fine quorum because we haven't had a problem this year, but next year it's going to be a little tighter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, listen, why don't we do it this way? Why don't you, it sounds like it's a little bit up in the air, although not entirely. Why don't you let us know in January what the plan is? Okay. And then we'll decide what to do together. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, is that something? does is that an issue for well yeah i mean i don't you know well we've had we've had this issue before so when nia steps off and yeah. kate steps into her role then we have to have somebody fill that associate member position right but they would be if kate stepped off entirely then we'd be having somebody step into a full a full voting position mm-hmm Correct. Well, yeah. no, I think, um, Heather, did you just tell me that we can actually, we have the power. Can we, so can I, we I spoke with Marsha and Elizabeth about this, and they said that um, if that's the case, we could move an associate member from an, or request that an associate member um, from a different nominating committee be moved to um, the Concord Museum nominating party um, so that we wouldn't have <laughs> A brand new person as a full member. Good, that makes sense. So that it might be sense, a little yeah. unorthodox, but in other words, you know, in my when I'm looking at the list, probably what would happen is Abigail, we'd move you up to full voting membership. Then we'd have a full slate, mm -hmm. and then it would be a little odd. We'd have two uh, library appointees. But anyway, it's. I yeah. think I think the issue of appointing bodies is a whole other thing that Lisa yeah. and I've had had virtual drinks over several times now. I, I think that's it, the whole way that works is still a little weird, but uh, but anyway, that's that's what I think would happen in January. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, I think it makes sense to have five full voting members present, all of whom have had past experience yeah. on the commission yeah. and yeah. how we have to finagle that technically. Agreed. However Agreed. that has to happen can happen. Okay. Um, and, and then, then if Kate could, I mean, I think it would be easier to be on a leave of absence as an associate member when there's a full voting member on that slate. Do you okay. see what I'm saying? It's less, yeah. that's less problematic. Yeah, yeah, true. So the bigger challenge is we do need two, we have one potential member coming in natural resources, Henry Moss. We're gonna need two more members next year. So, you know, send out your Christmas cards this year. I've reached out to one person I haven't heard back yet. Um, I think there are a couple of ideas, but let's talk about that in January. Well, I dug up Henry, so take it Yes, power. you're done. You've done your replacement. Done, yeah. I've, I've replaced if you find another one, great, but you know, <laughs> we'll let you off the hook. I'll think about that. Oh, I remembered something. Sorry that I, yes. Heather, I don't know if I should have mentioned to you. Just a little recap about what's going on in Crosby's Plaza, which doesn't really affect us, but um, I went to that hearing. Does anyone yes, want to hear about was that? Was anyone else there? Luis, did you go? I was, I was there. I forgot there. The, okay. I, yep. was there. I, I listened in on Zoom. Um, okay, go ahead. Yes. Tell us what you think. Actually, I thought the chair, the zoning chair, who I do not know, Mr. Flint, um did a very good job um i think explicating you know how zoning got to where it is does everyone know what this is about i was not aware of what it is and it doesn't really affect us except it just seems like 
being on HDC, people come up to me and, and this probably happens to you all and, you know, expects me to opine on these things that are, you know, either zoning or planning or whatever else, I'm, you know, but, um, but it's, it's changing, it's doing some rezoning in the, that whole uh, thorough depot district. Uh, as far as I can tell, ostensibly to stimulate um, building and, and redevelopment of, of in, in a mixed use way. Um, but that neighborhood is very opposed to it. And so this was a hearing that I went to that um, several people sort of, you know, exhorted me to go to. Abby, were you there? Were you one of the 300? Yeah, I, li I listened in. I thought, I think what was interesting about it is I, I do think, I do think the HDC would potentially does have an interest in that this redistrict, this rezoning in this area will abut directly yep. up against um, one of our districts. So I yep. think there is an interest on our part. Um, I think what my takeaway from it beyond the specific business district is um, there did seem to be strong support for a townwide design review board, which I know yeah. Peter talked about quite a bit and we've mm -hmm. talked about quite a bit for major projects. Um, there seemed to be general consensus and support um, that that would be one, people not understanding why we didn't have that in town and two, support for um, making a move to establishing something along those lines, um, which is certainly something we've talked about and we've run into when we have big projects, um, you know, or big projects that are outside of a district. Uh, so I thought that that was interesting. So I think there seems to be a general feeling in town that um, there want, they, they want some sort of overview and control and, and guidance on, you know, major redevelopment and projects beyond simply, you know, it can be 45 feet tall and hundred feet long or what have you, that they're, that they're looking to have more control. Um, and there are design guidelines that are in the preliminary stages that they're proposing for the Thoreau Business District. So I thought that was, I thought that was interesting, but there's the yeah. general concerns about, you know, most of the concerns were, you know, traffic and, um, you know, density and, and that type of thing. Um, so, but I think, yeah, I think it was, I think it was a well-run meeting. Um, I think yeah. that was instructive. Um, I think it was interesting. I think, um, there's a lot of community interest now. Um, and I think it's, I think just generally speaking too, I think it's interesting with these hybrid Zoom in-person meetings. Um, I think it's generating more interest and participation in the broader community. Um, and I think that's something that we should keep in mind just generally going forward that it actually seems to be kind of spurring some more um, kind of community interest and participation, which I like to see. So all yeah. in all, I mean, regardless of the actual substance of the meeting, I think it was, I think it was a positive expression of kind of Concord working through some issues, so. And I think it also pointed out the as a number of people said that they didn't know anything about this and they hadn't heard about the process, even though they've been a number of meetings. <clears throat> that great hole is our horrible newspaper and that there, you know, people, there's just no central way for people to get connected. And, you know, if you read the Concord Journal or I guess now the Lincoln Concord Journal, or the Concord Lincoln Journal, I'm not sure what it is, uh, but there was one issue that had nothing to do with Lincoln or Concord in it, which I thought was, uh, was absolutely fascinating. So I think that I think uh, I think that Abby's right. Uh, the Zoom does bring out more people and uh, mm. and allows more people to uh, to listen in. <clears throat> I uh, I also agree with Kate. I thought the chair did a great job. I can't imagine absorbing all of that information mm. and putting it out in such a cogent way. I think they sort of shot themselves in the foot by putting out this you know ninety unit massive uh, plan. Peter and I talked about this, and you take one look at that, and you go, Oh my God, we don't want that anywhere. And, but uh, near us. But then when he explained it and there actually would be more open space in front, there's it, it actually gonna, because of setbacks, it actually more, it'd be more green space in the area. So I think, it, I think it's a, the zoning is a good idea. It's just gotta be finessed more and it's gotta be worked on. But, I, um, uh, but there are a number of people that said that nothing would like that no man's land of Crosby parking lot. You know, my, when I send my kids to the grocery store, you know, I don't know if they're gonna come back and get hit in the parking lot, which has, no route to go any place uh, around it. So I, you know, I think I think they're heading in the right direction, but it's going to take some work. Uh, that's for sure. And I don't think I don't I don't see ninety units there. You know, maybe thirty, but you know, we'll yeah. see. I did. You know, it was the one thing also that people touched upon was to what extent was this influenced by the MAPC? You know, which is 
in how much were they applying closer in suburb standards to a place that is, you know, partly exerted, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and is happy to be that way. I mean, it's, you know, people, you know, could live in, you know, Lexington or, you know, somewhere closer in, but they live here. And so does everything have to be tidally, you know, signed out and, you know, maximized and everything else? Well, no. And, how, you know, where is that message coming from? Hmm. So it was, okay. it was interesting. Well, um, one uh, of the of the arguments that was made was that uh, the whole uh, design review was uh, triggered by the Indition Concord document. Oh, right. And actually, if you see the Indition Concord document, uh, one of the criticisms that I have for that document is that it's a, it's an utopia. You see, everything it's perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. So that Concord that that document doesn't allow for accommodation for for the for real life to say so. But I think that the planning board did an outstanding job. Uh, I think that uh, the issues raised with the architectural review board gives us the impetus to uh, further the creation of uh, this entity, which would benefit us substantially. And I think that we now have the critical mass to, to promote that at uh, higher levels. And uh, my impression was that the arguments that were made against the project were arguments that were basically uh, in the service of preserving the status quo. So nobody could envision anything different from what it's already there. And everybody was quite concerned about how the, 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 the appearance or the, the spirit of, of the dwellings is going to change. And um, I think that that's a legitimate position. But on the other hand, it's, I don't think that it's compatible with a the fact that uh, time goes by and things change. But overall, I think it was a very informative meeting and that we should be involved very closely with the planning board to try to uh, participate in, in implementing uh, whatever is gonna happen there. Something's gonna happen. Okay, thank you. Heather, do you- Peter, I would say that, what, add, add one more thing and that is that, uh, and I think 615 Lowell Road points that out and that is, what are we gonna do about housing in Concord and where are we gonna build? I mean, there's a huge movement to, to build an infill space, which 615 is mm -hmm. in a lot of communities. You know, you build in an infill space in a neighborhood that already has some housing. Or do we eat up fields and trees and we don't want it on Thoreau Street in a, in a paved lot? So where do we want housing in Concord? Um, I guess scattered around. But it, it, a lot of this is, is frankly anti-housing. Yeah. Well well, well, I, I, had a, I, I had a meeting with uh, the uh, director of sustainability for Concord. And you know, her, her take was, uh, you know, this is the dilemma. Um, you densify the center of town so you can keep the open spaces open and, and they remain open or you do a sprawl and then you build in the open spaces. And that, you know, that's, that's a legitimate question for the people of Concord to, to answer. And I think that what the planning board is doing is precisely trying to answer that with a solution that of course will upset uh, some people and, uh, and no, not everyone is gonna be happy about it, but I think that it's a good compromise. So that's the reason I have an overall positive impression about what was presented in that meeting. Well, in the interest of dispassionate subjective review, Heather, do you know if the design review board issue has made any traction? Or is that coming from the select board or? I have not heard anything about it. I, mean, it's, I, I don't know who generates it. Is It's come up from a bunch of different places, but. Um, I have no I think idea the who to generate staff it. that board. Yeah. We'd need to hire another planner. <laughs> <laughs> No. Who's going to serve all... on it? We can't find people for HDC. Where are all these design people going to come from in town that we haven't oh. identified yet? Come out oh, believe me. Our architects love to express their opinion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you won't be on the HDC forever. Nia, see? Nia needs a new job. Yeah, right. Nia needs a, needs a new job. Nia, right. does, well, Nia doesn't need a new job, but thank you no. very much for your concern. Speaking of which, so tonight is your last meeting, Mia, or last official meeting, which we're, I, you know, I, I'm sort of speechless with how sorry I am to see you go. So I hope we don't see the last of you. 
And we would have champagne and, and cheese and crackers, but of course, here we are stuck in our Zoom rooms. We can't. <laughs> and I was told it was illegal. So that's <laughs> right. Do you remember we used to have champagne and brownies? We did. Yeah, yes. Then we got yeah. cut off and we had to have sparkling water or something. Nancy, desperate. lock your ears. We didn't say anything. <laughs> I, I, I have a motion to make. If I, yes, Bruce has a motion. Oh, Lord. I, I want that the Historic Districts Commission formally express its gratitude to Nia Glenn for her commitment to the historic identity of the town of Concord, for her energy, for her integrity, and for overall concern about making Concord a much better place to live, for which I personally thank you. I'll enthusiastically that. second. Second. All <laughs> in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Well, I just, I just want to thank all of you. You're a great group. It's been an honor to serve with you. I know you will go forward and continue to be fabulous. So I will miss you all. And I may have to just zoom in from time to time. Just to, <laughs> Keep us all honest. You to wave. But Dennis, what is this thing that you that, dropped that, off when you nearly killed my husband? That's under a cover of darkness. Champagne. That's from oh, all of well, that's us. That's the place of champagne. Thank you. So you need to open it. <laughs> Wait, I didn't tell you to spend that much money. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to tell. You have to show us what it is. All right, I'm going to open it. Here I go. And Nia, you have to come to the 615 Lowell Road site visits. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. It's a, it's a book mean, on zoning regulations. Oh no! Please no. <laughs> I'm opening the card first, like my mother always taught me to. Very good. Nia, token of thanks for all of your stellar service to the HDC. Many warm thanks, your HDC compatriots. Thank you. Aren't you so nice? I didn't even recognize myself in, in, in the words that Luis was um, <laughs> using. Oh, that's Generally a generic not potion. We just fill in whoever's retiring. Yeah. No. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely not true. That, that is oh, not... yay! Can you see? Uh, it's uh, the garden book. Thank you so much. This is so sweet of you to yeah, do this. Very sweet. <laughs> oh, I, will, I will be tucked up in January thinking of you on Thursday evening, sweating bullets over 615. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll be happily reading through this book. So thank you so much. It's really thoughtful. You're welcome. Well, you deserve that and more. And uh, well, I'm sorry thank to you there myself. I, I really wish you all you. a very Merry Christmas or whatever you celebrate. Yes. Thank and you. a Happy New Year. It's hard to believe we're yes. wishing each other a Happy New Year. But uh, here no. where did 21, where did 20 go? Where did 21 go? Now we're heading for 22. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have like five more short days and then the days are going to start to get longer. Well, yeah, we're like, almost on the other end of the uh, lights circuit, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to get cards out so, to all of you, but I will tell all of you, including Heather and Heather. <laughs> I want to thank you all for your service this year. It's been a pleasure being chair and just I love seeing all of you every other week. Um, so I really do appreciate all of your efforts on behalf of the town. And it's just nice to get to know all of you a little bit more every year. So there. Well, um, we should also commend you for an outstanding job. How many years have you been chair? I think it's at least 10. Two. Um, <laughs> you've, been, you've really been through thick and thin and uh, handling Zoom and everything. So we are all grateful to you. Behind well, every great chair is a great commission. Well. Wow. You You're go. very kind to say that, but we would be dead in the water without you the past two years. So, and a great planner and a great staff that yeah, birds <laughs> all of us cats. And keeps yes, us in mind. sure. Keeps us all afloat and legal, sort of. And let's all hope Heather's had the Charlotte, Charlotte, right? Yeah. Has to have a yes. COVID test tomorrow. Yeah. We'll hope oh. that comes back negative. Has she Somebody lost her taste and smell? COVID positive case in her room at daycare. So um, she has no symptoms. Oh no. Um, but we're at home quarantined and the board of health said that um, tomorrow is day five after exposure. So we can get 
her tested and hopefully it'll be negative and she can go back to daycare. Wow. Oh, cross. I hope for your Good sake. luck. All right, all of you, please try to stay healthy for the next know. like three weeks. I need you at that site visit on the sixth. <laughs> yes, yes. Good luck with that. No, safe travels and and uh, a blessed New Year and happy holiday <laughs> to all of you. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Take thank care. You. Yeah. All right, folks. Take care. Here we go. Uh, motion to adjourn. Uh, oh, yeah, that too. Motion to adjourn. All in favor. Aye. Uh, all right. All right. See you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. Too. Good luck. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.